Hello, Warren, Charlie. My name is Matt Peterson. I'm a shareholder from Seattle, Washington, and it is a true pleasure being here today. My question for you is simple. Uh, the two of you have had a, many great opportunities throughout your years to work with many fine mentors and teachers. And I'm wondering if you could provide us with a few names of some present day mentors that we may look to for advice and, uh, and uh, our own ways to approach problems and situations. People similar to the uh, Grams and the Fishers of the present day. Well, the interesting thing, you don't have to look at the present day ones necessarily. I mean, if you wanted to look at great business careers, you could look at Tom Murphy or Don Keogh on our board, and you could learn everything you could learn about business person by just studying them, and you don't have to study somebody that's, that's, that is 55 and currently in some executive position. Their lessons are, are timeless. And there's going to be a study, I think the Harvard Business, somebody sent it to me from the Harvard Business uh, School, you know, on Cap Cities, but there's been others in the past. And, you know, if you learn the lessons of Tom Murphy, you don't need to learn any other lessons in terms of business. And I would say if you learn the invest lessons of certain investors in the past, you know, you don't need to worry about a contemporary example. Charlie? Well, I think it's also true that Warren and I are not following very well the 40-year-old investment professionals. Isn't that right? Are you hiding something from no. me? I didn't know there were any 40-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they're all 25 now. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, no, the, 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 Investing is not that, is really not complicated. I mean, the, the, the basic framework for it is simple. Now, then you, you have to work at it some to find the best pockets of, of uh, undervaluation maybe or something. But you didn't have to have a, you didn't have to have a high IQ. You didn't have to have lots of investment smarts to buy junk bonds in 2002 or even to do some of the stuff that was available when LTCM got in trouble, you really just had to have sort of the courage of your convictions. You had to have the willingness to do something when everybody else was petrified. And, but that was true in 1974 when you know, we were buying stocks at very, very, very low multiples of earnings. It wasn't that anybody didn't, didn't know that they were cheap. They were just paralyzed for one reason or another. And, and uh, you know, that, the lesson of following logic rather than emotion, you know, is something that is obvious and some people have great trouble with it and others have less trouble. Charlie, can you give me any more help on that? Well, I think this is different. When we were young, we had way less competition than you people have now. There weren't very many smart people in the investment management field. They really weren't. And, and you should have seen the people who were in the bank trust departments. I mean, so now we've got armies of brilliant young people and all these private partnerships and all these proprietary desks and all the big investment banks. It's a, and we've got a vast amount of talent in the investment management business. So, and there's a lot of competition. If there were suddenly a crisis now, there would be 500 firms that would be studying it intensely, each having capital that they could commit on a hair trigger. In our day, we would frequently be all alone. But in 2002, we'd be the only buyer. We'd be the only buyer. But in 2002, Charlie, there were tons of people that had investment experience and high IQs and lots of money was around. Wasn't any question about money. It's just they were terrified of that particular arena. Well, when you have a huge convulsion, which is like a big fire in this auditorium right now, you know, you get a lot of weird behavior. And if you, <laughs> and if you can. Particularly at the head table. <laughs> and, and, and if you can be wise when everybody else is going crazy, sure, there will still be opportunities. 
but that may give you a long, dull stretches if that's your strategy. Three years ago, two, three years ago, you could find a number of securities in Korea population, 50 million advanced society, strong balance sheets, strong industry positions at three or so times earnings. Now, but that took a convulsion to create that. A well, real, a big convulsion. Yeah, but the convulsion happened three or four years earlier, yeah. five, five years earlier, and plenty of smart people in Korea in the investment business, plenty of smart people here scouring. The information was all available. You, 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 can, you can go to the Internet and get information about Korean companies that's just as good as you get up from the SEC. And there they were, dozens of companies at very, very, very cheap prices. Now. It where are all, where are all these smart people and with all this money? <laughs> it did happen, but if I asked you to name 20 more like it, you would have great difficulty. I'm not going to name them. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. 